in the program book is, has, has been changed in this version. So the title is, uh, as, as he pro introduced in, <clears throat> so the title is Robust Pathway-Based Multiomics Data Integration Using Directed Random Walk for Survival Prediction in Multiple Cancer Studies. So <clears throat> in this presentation, I will first introduce the motivation of our works, and then I will, in, uh, I will also introduce some related works about multiomics in integration models. And, and also, in this study, we incorporated some pathway information as a prior knowledge for integrating multi multiomics data. So we, we, will in, in, uh, we will introduce some related uh, recent works about pathway-based integration methods. And then next, I will <coughs> explain the details of our methods and then experimental results. And then finally, I will conclude my presentation. So the motivation of our work is, the, uh, is, uh, is how to use the rich information of multiomics data because many, many studies showed that the, the multi, multiomics data provided some opportunities for better biological understand, understanding and some finding some important pathways and genes for cancers and improved cl clinical outcome prediction. So in this manner, uh, integrative analysis is very important to discover interrelationships between multiple different levels of data. So <clears throat> when we in, 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 integrate some multi, multiomics data, we can think of uh, graph-based integration, inter, integration methods. Because uh, uh, in, in 2014, this study is, uh, is, uh, showed an effectiveness of graph-based framework for integrating multiomics data and genomic knowledge as a prior, prior information. And then the results in this study revealed an interplay between different levels of data. And also they showed an improved prediction power for ovarian cancer. So uh, instead of con concatenating, simply concatenating multiple types of data, we can think of the idea of co combining multiomics data to consider the interactions between genes. And, <clears throat> and also, uh, like in this previous study, we can incorporate some genomic knowledge such as pathway information on this integrated graph because it can be useful to increase prediction power and find some important genes and pathways in cancers. So in 2013, which is a directed random walk based pathway activity inference method. So as you can see in this figure, we can, uh, it, the, this heat map shows the pathway activities to differentiate some d different phenotypes. And then this, uh, uh, based on the pathway activity inference method, which is proposed in this method, they also found some important, topologically important pathways and genes for cancers. And also I will introduce some uh, recent works about pathway-based integrated methods. So they simply transformed some gen single genomic profile into pathway profile using some activity scoring measure they defined. So maybe we, uh, <clears throat> if you think about these methods, uh, the simplest way is to com is to score genes, score the set of genes for each pathway, and then just uh, just uh, just combine the sc uh, score of the genes by summing up or normalization. So one of the methods, which is published in Bioinformatics 2005, which is called a uh, pathway level ana analysis of gene expression, uh, which is called PLOTCH, they used the singular vector of singular value decomposition as an activity scoring measure of given gene set for each pathway. So in, uh, as you can see in this figure, so uh, for, for sing single genomic profile is transformed into pathway activities per samples using this SVD of singular vector scoring measure. And also the another method, which is called Z-score method, which uh, Z-score is uh, is Z normalized score. So they simply converted gene expression profile into Z normalized scores, and then they just, uh, just combined these scores of genes in each pathway per sample. 
But those two methods, plotch and these core methods, <clears throat> they simply just take pathways as the set of genes and then combining some scoring of the genes for each pathway. But in, so <clears throat> we thought of the idea of considering gene gene interactions on the graph. So some methods utilize some, these kind of gene gene interactions on a graph, which is published in Bioinformatics 2011. Uh, so this method is called a uh, denoising algorithm based on relevance network topology, uh, aka DART, and it, it utilizes some perturbation signatures which reflect gene contributions. So it, uh, it can be used to differentiate of regulated genes and downregulated genes. And then they build some pruned network, which is called relevance network, using these perturbation signatures. And then they defined some pathway, activity, uh, pathway activation matrix based on this relevance network topology. So for each pathway, based on this network topology, they can define some pathway activities per samples from the single genomic profile. And also the, in 2013, uh, directed, directed random walk based pathway activity inference methods, which is called DRW. And <clears throat> this method, uh, this, uh, this method weight genes in the gene gene network uh, using the pathway information. And then they identified some topologically important genes and pathways using, using directed random walk based methods. However, those uh, the previous, the, the previous methods only targeted a single genomic profile. So the integrated extension on multi-omics data has been also published in, uh, in scientific reports in 2015. So in these methods, the pathway activity scoring measures are same as original DRW methods, but they combine some information of gene expression data and metabolic data on the gene metabolic graph. So using this graph, uh, uh, by performing random walk on this me gene metabolic graph, they can uh, define some pathway activities per samples like this. So using these two different types of genome pro profiles, we can obtain some single pathway profiles using this method. So, in, so as a result in this study, they improved, uh, they showed the improved prediction power and also they found some many risk metabolic pathways and topologically important genes for cancer by a joint analysis of gene expression and metabolic data for a prostate can cancer data set. So we previously proposed the, these uh, <coughs> proposed integrated DRW methods, which exploits this kind of DRW-based methods. So in this study, we incorporated interaction between uh, gene expression and methylation for breast cancer data set. And then, and then we, we, we constructed the gene, uh, gene, gene graph using pathway information and uh, by, by considering uh, interactions between those two data. And the results in our study shows an improved survival prediction power and also we jointly analyzed some gene expression and methylation data on an, on an integrated gene gene graph. So in this study, in Comda, Comda Data <coughs> Integration Challenge, what we are going to do is to investigate the effectiveness of these integrated DRW methods on other types of genomic profiles for two different cancers. So using, using Comda Challenge data set, we have gene expression data and copy number data and we, we have uh, neuroblastoma cancer patients, patient samples, and breast cancer patient samples. So we reconstructed the gene gene graph using, uh, it reflecting the interactions between gene expression and copy number data. And we also constructed the graph using the updated pathway database because the original integrated DRW methods use the outdated pathway database, so we, we updated the, this database. And also, the, uh, we, we evaluate the classification performance using, uh, using uh, and we address the problem of uh, classifying 
uh, sample, whole samples into two survival groups for breast cancer and neuroblastoma patient samples. So this is the overview of our methods. So we first constructed the Jinjin graph using the Pathway database, and then we also consider the interactions between gene expression and copy number data. And then by per, uh, to start random walk on this integrated Jinjin graph, we, uh, we first initialize the node weights, which, which are gene weights. And, and as the gene expression val values and copy number values have different data distributions, so we, uh, we, we defined some weighting schemes and scoring measures for, uh, for each data set. And for, uh, for these two different, two different genomic profiles for each cancer, we can obtain the uh, pathway activities per samples, which are single genome, a single pathway profile using this integrated BRW method. <coughs> and then those pathway profile is going to be the input to the survival classification model. And then we also ranked pathway, important pathway features use, uh, using some testing methods. Uh, and then we, uh, and, and on the top ranked pathways, we also jointly on a, identified some important pathways and genes for each cancer. And <clears throat> I will explain the details of our methods. So to construct the integrated gene, gene graph, we first collected 327 human pathways and corresponding gene sets from CAC, data, CAC pathway database. And then we also defined the, the interactions between genes using our CAC graph pack package. So for each single genomic profile, we obtained integrated directed gene gene graph, uh, which contain about 7,000 nodes and uh, 58,000 edges. And to construct the integrated gene gene graph using those two types of genomic profiles, we have the we have the in, uh, we have that gene gene graph using uh, gene expression, gene expression, and then to reflect the impact of copy number variation on gene expression, we assign directional edges to all the overlapping genes. So on this integrated graph, we uh, we first initialize the gene weights using using different test statistical testing, me testing measures. So the weight of the gene WG is, the, is defined as the p-value from DSC2 analysis for the gene expression data of, uh, from RNA-seq. And for the gene expression data uh, from mi microarray, we used the two-tailed t-tests across two groups of samples. And then for copy number data, it contains uh, it contains discrete va variables, which are five, uh, five categorical variables, which are minus, one, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. So in this case, we used chi-square test of independence. So the uh, WG is log transformed in, into log transformed, and then we can obtain some fi uh, final initial weight vector of the, of the genes. So using this initial weight vector of genes, uh, you, we can perform random walk on this integrated graph. So, uh, so in the, with, with this equation, by performing random walk on this, uh, on this graph, the, w, the uh, w, which are the weight of the genes, are iteratively updated, and then it's shown to be uh, converged to a steady state, which are W infinity. So this is the final weight vector of the genes for each genomic profiles. And also we obtained final weight vector of genes and also we have uh, z-normalized gene expression values for, for gene expression data in, uh, for example. And then we also defined some scoring measures as you can see in, in here. Uh, so score of the genes is uh, defined for three different statistical measures, as you can see in, uh, in the weight, weight of the genes. So we used uh, RNA-seq data. Uh, for RNA-seq data, we used log 2 for change from DSC2 analysis. 
And then for, uh, for the gene expression data from microarray, we use sign values of the t -statistics, t statistics of the genes. And then for the copy number data, we use the mean differences between two groups of samples. <clears throat> and, the, and this score of the genes represents how much gene expression values have changed between two groups of samples. And we also, uh, so from, from these methods, we can obtain one single pathway profile. So using, uh, we, we, and, and we also uh, obtained some top ranked pathway features using feature ranking strategy. So we, we ranked pathway features using p-values from the t-tests of pathway activities. And then we, uh, and then we, we, we selected top k pathways across samples, which are going to be the input to the classification model. And also, uh, in, uh, in our methods, the performance evaluation is done with a survival class classification model. So logist we use the logistic regression model, which classifies the whole samples into two survival groups. And the top K pathway features, in top K pathway features, the optimal number of K is empirically set to have the best classification performance. So for each method, we select uh, we set the number of k for uh, to uh, the optimal number of k, and for the top ranked pathway features, we we also jointly analyzed the gene uh, gene expression value uh, gene expression and uh, copy number data. So <clears throat> uh, I will introduce some Comda challenge data sets. So we have breast cancer patients data from Metabric data sets. And we have in we have two types of genomic profiles, which are mRNA expression profile, uh, which contained uh, about 24,000 genes, and in copy number data we have about 22,000 genes. And then these are statis statistics of our methods. We have overlapped samples from those two di two different genomic profiles, so we have 1,645 patient samples. And then the average age at diagnosis was, was 62, and average survival years was 10 years. So we divided uh, the, as, uh, as our method classifies the whole samples into two survival groups. So we, we, uh, we divided the whole samples into two, two groups, which are good group and poor group, and then with, uh, with respect <coughs> to their survival years. And the cutoff value is set to 10 years because the average survival years was 10 years. So again, I'm uh, <coughs> reminding the previ previous, uh, previous task to evaluate our class classification performance. The, ho the whole samples are going, going to be uh, divided into two survival groups, and then our, survival, uh, our prediction model tra uh, trains these, uh, these samples uh, to, to classify these two, two survival groups. And then the classification uh, performance is evaluated with the accuracy. And also for whole sample, we performed five-fold cross-validation, which, which divided the whole samples into five folds, and then leaves one, uh, one fold as a validation set, and then remaining, remaining folds, remaining four folds as a training set. And we also have neuroblastoma data sets for this challenge. And it contains uh, RNA seq gene, gene expression profile, which contain about 60,000 genes. And for copy num DNA copy, copy number data, we have about 22,000 genes. And we also uh, obtained the overlapped sample from gene expression data and copy number data. So we have 144 patient samples, which are extremely small, and they are in, and these are statistics. So the patient sam the what, among 144 patient samples, female patients were uh, 56 and male patients were 88, and average age was 16 months, and average survival years is less than one year. 
And we also divided the, this, these neuroblastoma samples into two survival groups with, re with respect to the binary quest label and for overall survival days. And this binary quest label is maybe predefined in, the, in this NCBI data set. So we, we just used this binary quest label for dividing the whole samples. And we also, uh, and we also evaluated our classification performance for neuroblastoma, neuroblastoma patient samples in the same way as breast cancer patients. But how, uh, however, in uh, the, the different things in neuroblastoma patient samples, we have only 144 patient samples, which are extremely small compared to breast cancer data sets. So in this case, we used uh, leave on out cross validation, which leaves only one sample as a validation set and the remaining samples as a training set. And we also, in experiments, we compared those four pathway based methods, which are introduced in previous slides. So for expression data in each data set, we, we, we uh, for, uh, for these four pathway based methods, a single, single gene expression profile is tr transformed into pathway profile. And then uh, our, our proposed method also in, uh, in both gene expression data and copy number data, we can obtain one single pathway profile. And then the other uh, classification performance evaluation task is done in the same way as the proposed method. And again, to remind those, two, those four methods, so PLOT and G-score only takes pathways as the set of genes and then using some scoring measures and then DART and DRW and the proposed method which are integrative DRW. They, uh, those, three, th uh, th those two methods and our proposed method is the graph-based methods to utilize some gene-gene interactions on a graph. So uh, this is the results of uh, uh, classification performance performances for breast cancer patient samples and neuroblastoma patient samples. So uh, in, uh, again, in breast cancer patient samples, we did five-fold cross-validation uh, for 50 times, and then neuroblastoma data set, uh, because of the size of the, size of the samples, si size of the samples, we did leave on out cross-validation. So, and leave on out cross-validation only is the best classification performance, so the plotting is different, that's why the plotting is different. So the, these four methods are the uh, pathway-based methods on gene, single gene, gene expression profile, and then the last one is the integrated DRW method we proposed on the gene expression profile and copy number data. And we also showed that the optimal number of K for each method And in this result, we can see that the last three results is, is DART, DRW, and IDRW, which, uh, which incorporates interactions between genes on a graph. And we can find some improved prediction power using, using graph-based methods. And especially uh, DRW-based approaches, which are the last two results, are better than uh, DART method. So we can we can say uh, we can say that especially the RW based approaches showed uh, more contribution to a performance improvement. And the last one is uh, is IDRW on uh, both gene expression and copy number data, and we can see that IDRW performed the best cl classification performance, though the uh, improvement is quite marginal. And we also identified some cancer-associated pathways and genes using the pathway ranking strategy <coughs> on, on our proposed method. So we showed uh, in breast cancer patient samples, we obtained 25, pa uh, 25 rank top-ranked pathways, as you can see in this table. And, also the, and we also showed the total number of genes for pathways, and then we also, uh, and then we also shown that jointly identified some uh, differentially expressed genes and significant genes for uh, gene expression data and copy number data. And maybe uh, we, we found some evidences that those top-ranked pathways 
have relations to survivability of breast cancer patients. But, and I will briefly introduce some of the evidences we found in, in our paper of some, some of the pathways, like the... So first in 2000, uh, uh, 2011 in cell, uh, this, this paper showed six biological capabilities which are acquired during the tumor generation. And some of the top ranked pathways for breast cancer, which are those, the, those four pathways, have relations with at least one of six function of this. And it means uh, those top ranked, uh, th those four pathways have relations to breast, uh, the tumor generations, which include breast cancer. And we also found some evidences of uh, first ranked pathway, which are ol olfactory transduction pathway. So, <clears throat> so one, uh, we found some several studies which, uh, which proposed the overexpression of olfactory receptor genes uh, have, uh, have relations to bearing breast tumors. And we, found, uh, we, and we also found some uh, strong and more, more weaker evidences for the pathways that have relations to survivability of breast, breast cancer. And we, in, in neuroblastoma patient samples, we obtained fi uh, top five pa pathways and the, the number of K, the number of K is empirically set to have the best classification performance. And for each pathway, we also obtained the total number of genes and the number of significant genes for each da data set. And then maybe like uh, uh, in, uh, in this neuroblastoma stomach patient samples, uh, I repeatedly say that the, they, they, there, there are some issues because uh, the set, Sample size, sample size is extremely small, but the uh, but the feature set feature size feature size is uh, comparably very large, which are like about sixty thousand genes, but the patient samples is, is only about one hundred samples. So there there can be issues, but we found some 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 evidences for those two pathways because. I, we, we think is it, those two are very weird in uh, stomach, uh, in this result. So in uh, so so the first in biosecretion pathway, we found some uh, we found some studies which proposed a mechanism an, uh, about anti-tumor effect of lithocholic bile acid in in human urobostoma cells. And also in alcoholism pathway includes the reaction to ethanol in dopaminergic neuron. And we found some several studies. <clears throat> so catecholamine metabolite, which contain uh, dopamine elevated in neuroblastoma patients. So maybe this, those evidences can be a very weak, weak evidences, but we, we can conclude that those, uh, we, the selected top ranked pathways can be a potentially important features for the for survivability of uh, breast cancer patients and robustoma patients. So, in conclusion, in this study, we uh, we investigated and showed the effectiveness of uh, of our integrative in directed random walk based methods utilizing some pathway information on the, on two different cancer data sets, and we also benchmark. Uh, our uh, integrated DRW methods and several state-of-the-art pathway-based methods for the survival prediction model. And in contributions, in, in, in these methods, to utilize some Comda challenge data sets, we revamped a directed gene gene graph considering the interactions between gene expression and copy number data. And we also jointly identified some cancer-related pathways and genes on gene expression and copy number data for breast cancer and neuroblastoma data sets. And maybe for future works, we, uh, we uh, the, an extensive analysis of import, uh, top ranked pathways and the, uh, and the cor corresponding gene sets is necessary. And here I'd like to acknowledge 
our supervisor, Dr. Son, and the co-authors of this research, and all the our lab members. So thank you for your attention. Do you have any question? So questions? So thank you so much. That's a great talk and impressive results. My question is very naive. So uh, when you identify this 25 pathway, so you did that at every fold using the training data, or you use the entire data set for that? Um, because in uh, in this research, uh, we, uh, we we did five for cross validations for breast cancer data sets, and we uh, we find uh, the final classification accuracy is done with the validation data sets. So we uh, uh, maybe this this twenty five. Pathway sets are from the best cl the uh, from the best classification performance, which it, it is best. Oh, so so you have different result for the cross validation right, and right. on the validation set. Right. Yes. Okay. Great. Yes. More question. So, question and comment that uh, I see that you have really many variables that are shown as significant for copy number variation, mm -hmm. which is probably exaggeration because, well, we have done the same, and uh, we have used uh, correction for multiple hypothesis testing, and then we don't see many. We have seen very few copy number alteration uh, genes as significant. So have you corrected for co multiple hypothesis testing? And then another question. When you develop your feature selection mm. on the entire data set and then you apply the results for, you apply cross-validation, then still you allow leaking of information from the test set to validation set and then you exaggerate your results. This is second second comment. I, I understand that you didn't perform feature selection or feature construction Right. within the cross-validation, but on the entire data set, yes? Right, right. Okay, so that, that also is a reason for exaggerating your own results. Right. And then also, the metric that you have chosen to show, it's, it's fine, but it is not very good for, for especially for no, neuroblastoma, because right. the, this is, that. well, uh, this is not good for showing imbalanced data, so mm -hmm. the, the, the MCC probably would be better, Matthew's correlation coefficient. Uh -huh. So you, you could check whether with this metric you, you observe this, this improved result. So these are comments. Okay, thank you for your comments. And maybe uh, I'm not sure if I understand the far first question. What was that? So w whether you checked for multiple hypothesis uh, multiple. testing when you uh, when you found, uh, when you are looking for significant variables, significant genes. S significant genes? Yeah, because you are ah, testing okay. whether, the, whether the genes is significant 25,000 times, yes? So right, you have right. to correct for that. Maybe in, uh, in this method we, we make things simple, so we, we did only one st statistical testing yeah. methods. On the other hand, I, I really like this integrative approach for, right. for the, but you, I, I think you should do some tweaking of these technical details. Yeah. Right. I, but I the integration that. of the pathways is very, very interesting, yes. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have a comment with respect to the integration of the pathways. So, you know that some of the pathways are included in other pathways. So you have the key pathways uh, as a description of um, um, signaling, et cetera, et cetera, and then you have the disease pathways. So you have the cancer pathways, mm -hmm. and you have individual cancer pathways. Right. And actually the cancer pathways contains individual cancer pathways. So um, it can happen that some of these uh, significant uh, pathway that you found is because they are dragged by other pathways that you have found. Right. There is also a um, problem with this that um, um, so the genes are shared among many pathways. Even mm -hmm. if you have pathways which are not shared among them, right. so the genes are shared between many pathways. So in many cases, when you build up your network, I understand that you take 
If a gene appears in three pathways, you put mm -hmm. all the connection, mm -hmm. but you don't repeat the gene, or right. you repeat the gene. What, mm -hmm. what do you do? Mm. Because if you take the gene several times, you may biasing, you may be biasing genes overrepresented in the pathways. It could be a problem. I don't know if it is a problem for your approach. Mm. I mean, just commenting, just <laughs> not, not asking. <laughs> Um, I have another, yeah, I have another question. But, um, so when you find, when you find copy number, mm -hmm. when you integrate all the data, when you find copy number and you find genes, mm -hmm. are these genes, for example, overexpressed gene that you find a significant, are they within the amplification, for example, within the, within the copy number, or they are different? You know what I mean. Uh, so you you have you are integrating data, but these data are sort of correlated among them. So uh, my my question is, you find a copy number which is an amplification, mm -mm. and you find some genes which are significantly associated to the, to the survival at the same time. Uh, it happened that these genes are within the copy number. Uh, right. Uh, or 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 they are independent, you mean or both. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, both. Both. both right. For uh, maybe the the overlapped genes in gene expression data and copy number data, then we 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 consider the inter interactions uh, interactions between genes, and we, we first uh, established some two two that two two direct gene gene graph from gene expression data and copy number data, and then we just uh, connect the connect the to the overlapped genes. Okay, so I think we have to switch for the next. Uh, well, it's very interesting. Maybe we can discuss later. Okay.